Joining me now here on the MMA Report, a man that's returning to the UFC this weekend, UFC Fight Night 139, as he takes on Devontae Smith. This Julian Arosa. Julian, I appreciate the time. How would you describe the past two years for you, this journey back to the UFC? I mean, can you, can you sum, up, sum it up in a couple words? Uh, you know, maybe a little bit more than a couple of words, but, uh, you know, it's been up and down, I guess I'd say, uh, you know, but I never lost sight of, you know, following my dream of, you know, just being a better martial artist. You know, I figured if I put the work in, it would come and moving to Vegas helped me, you know, put more and more work into it. And then also, you know, I learned moving to Vegas that I need good representation on top of my skills. So, uh, I had switched over to, you know, management with Jason House at Iridium Sports, and uh, uh, which is actually who's Devontae's manager as well. But you know what? Uh, I talked to, you know, Jason about it, and he said, you know, he, he, did, he didn't want to get us, uh, you know, get in the way of chasing our dreams. And so if we had to fight each other, we had to fight each other. You know, it's all business anyways. I beat up some of my best friends in the gym on a daily basis, so it means nothing. You know, we're going to go in there, handle business, and afterwards we can go get a beer. Or we can, you know, be friends afterwards. But uh, business in the cage and then friends afterwards. Yeah, it's kind of uh, knowing kind of the timeline of how this kind of all works out. You, you sign with Jason just what you know ten days ago or so, and and, and little you, you get this phone call. I mean, it, it, it's it, in preparing for a short notice fight. What, what's the what's the pros and the cons for you? Uh, you know, I think one of the pros is uh, you know, obviously sh- being somebody who's willing to take a short notice fight, you have to always stay relatively ready. You know, you can't let yourself get out of shape. You can't get too big on weight. Luckily for me, I'm a, I can also make featherweight, and I'm that's where I really want to be is featherweight. But uh, uh, so 55 is easy for me to make. I can make that in a day's notice, and so weight is easy for me. But I also stay pretty ready, and uh, so I I would say I train about 80 percent of what I would on a fight camp outside of fight camp as well. And also, I just got off contenders, and I know that. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of guys who uh, don't get signed off contenders who do as good as I did on contenders usually will get a short notice fight. So I was already kind of thinking I might have a short notice fight with that. But as the months pass, it's like, you know, it gets, you know, it, it gets more and more frustrating because it'd been, it's been almost four months since my uh, contenders fight. So, you know, I was, I was thinking after knocking out Jamal Emmers, I was like, man, there's gotta be, you know, they gotta be calling me soon, man. I head kick knocked this dude out like spectacularly, like against a super tough opponent. And, I was already in the UFC, so they got to like, you know, they got to do something. Something's got to happen, and it wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. So basically, I had to get my uh, my kicks off of uh, just training hard. You know, sparring every Tuesday is our sparring days, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and those I treat like fights, man. I go in there with the mentality of you know trying to you know win those matches. You know, obviously, like I'm not trying to like kill my partners, but you know that's where I get my you know that's where I get my kicks for the week. You know, because I don't get to because I had no fights I was getting ready for, so I was just training. You know, in talking to Devante, he had told me, he's like, you know, multiple guys had turned this fight down. As you have kind of, you and your coaches have been, you know, you know, cramming for this fight of what Devante does the best. Why do you think people turn the fight down against him? Well, uh, I heard some higher level guys in the UFC turn the fight down. And I understand that on a sense of, uh, you, it's a kind of a lose-lose situation for other um, solidified UFC guys to fight a guy off contenders, right? Because because uh, Devonte, if Devonte loses against a guy who's already solidified in the UFC, you know that's you know that's what's supposed to happen, right? You know, but if Devonte beats a guy that's already solidified in the UFC, that's not necessarily supposed to happen. You know, Devonte is going to be an underdog against any of those guys. So any of those guys taking the fight is not really smart on their hand on their part, especially short notice. You know, because uh, uh, you know Devonte has the exact ability to ruin uh, a solidified UFC guy, you know, having that type of power, you know, you really have to avoid that and you have to take him into deep waters. And, uh, you know, if, uh, a lot of veterans could beat him, but they don't want to take the risk of it on a short notice fight. You know, a guy like Dariush, I think got offered the fight and he declined it, but Dariush's last fight was a, uh, a debuter short notice. who got knocked out by Alex Fernandez. So if that happened again to him by a guy, Devante, he might be cut from the UFC. You never know, you know, like, you know, to lose by two debuters in a row. I mean, that could be really bad on someone's resume, especially a guy like Dariush, who's like, you know, top 10 in the world, you know? And uh, so I think that's why those guys, you know, decline those, that fight. I think Devante is a, is stylistically is a decent matchup for me. Um, Cause he's more of a traditional striker. I'm really unorthodox and uh, I'm, I pride myself on my cardio and taking people to deep water. And, uh, but I have nothing to lose too. You know, me and Devante are finding our way back in the UFC 
And uh, well, I'm finding I'm fighting my way back in the UFC. I mean, but you know, we're, I feel like I'm still debuting. I feel like I, I feel like I didn't get a good run in the in the beginning of it all, and so I feel like this is kind of almost a debut for me as well because it's been so long. And uh, so I think for me and him, it's like we have nothing to lose. We just have nothing. No, we have nothing but uh, you know just the ability to go out there and just give it everything we have and hope you know hope for the best. Would you do you look at the fight game any differently now as opposed to your earlier stint in the UFC? Uh, for sure. I think uh, being cut from the UFC and uh, and and going through that has made me feel as if like I I, I legitimately have nothing to lose now. Like uh, back then, it was like, oh, I'm in the UFC. Oh, I gotta like treat it like I'm, you know, carrying around like a uh, an egg in my hand and I can't drop it, you know. But like now, it's like, you know, I've already been there. I've already ha- I've had the worst thing happen to me. I I got knocked out on fucking. I got knocked out on one of the biggest cards in the world when D uh, when Diaz beat McGregor. Is I was on the undercard and I got knocked out by uh, Teruto Ishihara and then got cut from the UFC. So that's literally the worst thing that could possibly happen as a fighter is get knocked out in front of all your friends, all your family, and everybody in the world on a on a big card like that. And then uh, and then to also get cut from the UFC. So for me, it's like I have I have nothing to lose. I've you know and I've already accepted the possibilities of being able to. You know, I've been knocked out and, uh, you know, life still goes on. So it's like, you know, once you get that stuff, you know, once you've already accepted that stuff in your head, you can go out there and perform 100 percent and not worry about it. If it ha- You know, you always got to understand that those there's possibilities of anything happening. You know, there's a possibility I could walk across the street and get hit by a car. But, you know, I'm not going to stress about it every single day. So just like with fighting, you know, there's a possibility I'm going to go and lose this fight. But. I'm not going to stress about it every day. I'm just going to get it. You know, I'm just going to go in there and, and perform 100% to my abilities and, uh, you know, trust in my training and my ability. And, you know, if I lose, that's always a possibility, but I don't want to, I'm not going to make it a possibility for me to, on that night in my head. I, I know every fighter's got some type of motivation. Is part of a motivation for this fight the fact that you're a two to one betting underdog? I mean, th- does that come into your mindset at all? That's just, it's so weird to me that I'm an underdog. I mean, I, I, it's, I have like three times as many fights as this kid and I've beat some of the toughest dudes in the world. And I was in the UFC. It's just, it's just mind blowing that I'm an underdog like that. But shoot, Jamal Emmers, I was a two and a half to one underdog on that fight, which was absolutely, uh, nonsense in my head. But, uh, you know, it doesn't that doesn't bother me at all. Actually, that's you know, that's just that, that makes it better for me because I know a lot of people that want to bet money on me because they know who I am. and They've watched me train all the time. So it's more of a lucrative bet for them. I think, you know, even with me when I fought Jamal Embers on the contenders fight and there was a two to half, two and a half to one underdog. I was like, even if I lose, it's a good bet. I feel like I should beat that kid like nine times out of ten myself. So, like, I mean, I, I regardless if I win or lose, I think it was a great bet. Um, and especially even for this fight, if I'm a two to one underdog, I mean. It doesn't necessarily give me more motivation, but it takes the I guess it takes takes the edge off a little bit for me. I mean, he has I guess it it makes him feel like he might have more pressure on him because he's supposed to win maybe. But I just don't want to I I don't know who these matchmakers are. They must not be like MMA dudes because I have like three times as many fights as this guy. Like I'm literally one of the best featherweights in the world, and just because I'm fighting up a weight class against a guy who's got power doesn't mean. He should be the favorite. I mean, he. I don't even know how many amateur fights he has. I had 10 amateur fights, which is more than a lot of people. So I have all together, I have 37 fights. And he's got, I don't even, I mean, he's got nine pro fights. I don't know how many amateurs, but I have so much more experience than this guy. And I've been there. I've been at the big lights. You know, I've fought in front of, I fought in the Ultimate Fighter house four times. And I did uh, the contenders in that same house. So I fought in front of Dana White five times. And just in those, and not to mention the two UFC fights that I had walking out fighting in front of all, you know, everybody on, you know, on national television and all that stuff. So like I've been through all the motions and, uh, you know, that's a tough thing to get over. That's a tough thing to reenact before your fight, to understand how it's going to feel to be in the UFC, you know, be to walk out in front of everybody, to see Joe Rogan, to see Dana White, you know, to see all those people and to understand that, uh, you know, it's not like a, a regional show. It's, you know, there's a lot that goes into that. Fighting on the contender series and the ultimate fighter, I mean, I've talked to other guys about this. They'll talk about just it's it's just a unique scene. It's like yeah. nothing else you can get ready for. I mean, some guys will say it's like you feel like you're just having a gym fight. For you, as someone who now has done multiple fights there, how would yeah. you describe it? Yeah, you know, it, it has like – there's two different ways about it. You know, when you first do that – like the first, you know, Ultimate Fighter fight that I had, I was like, oh my God, Dana White's sitting right there. I can see him. I can see Sean Shelby. I can see all the, you know, see all the people that, 
you know, are in the huge organization, the UFC organization. But uh, it definitely has that gym, like gym vibe, you know, because there's only so many people in there. It's a small group of people there watching. So once you get past the fact that Dana White's there and like, you know, certain guys are there, once you get past that fact, it just, it does feel like a smaller show. It feels like one of those small, like amateur shows you're at or whatever. And so it kind of takes the edge off. And so there is a big difference between, you know, obviously that to UFC fight as well. So, but uh, yeah, I, d- I definitely, I definitely get that like little gym feel because most of the guys that are there are either on either side of, the, you know, you got family from one side and family from the other side. And then for me, when I was on contenders, I had a, uh, a lot of people cause I, you know, train out of Vegas. So I had a lot of guys from my gym there. So it was like, it was almost like I was just there sparring, you know, I had all my, you know, all my gym friends there I had my coaches there. So uh, I, you know, it was just similar to be, you know, just a sparring in the gym for me. What what would you, in terms of this fight on, on Saturday night, what would you say is one of the keys to victory for you? Um, most definitely one of the keys of, uh, for victory for me is uh, first and foremost, I have to avoid uh, his power right off the bat. You know, I have to avoid his power. I have to be moving all the time. Um, I can't stop staying, you know, I can't stay in front of him. Uh, anytime anybody stayed in front of him, they've gotten, you know, they've gotten TKO'd or KO'd and, um, and then what's also important on top of that is being evasive, but, uh, I also need to take him into deep water. Um, he's only been past the second round like three times, I think. And that's where he got one of his losses. And, um, one of the losses that he had against, um, uh, can't remember. It was his only loss. His John only Gunther. loss, um, Gunther. Yeah. And, uh, so, I mean, he almost knocked Gunther out. And so I think he, uh, over, overexerted himself because he almost knocked him out and then, uh, ended up, I think kind of giving up in that fight. I mean, uh, he got to a point where he wasn't really defending anymore. He's almost like just covering up and letting the fight be stopped. And so I think that's going to be obviously one of the keys to victory. My ground game is really good and really underrated because no one ever sees me take anybody down or really get, I mean, I'm more of a striker, but I, my ground game is, you know, really phenomenal as well. So, uh, and I don't have the same type of top pressure as a guy like Gunther has, but, uh, if I do get, uh, Devonte in the later rounds, I think that I can get on top of him and get a finish just like Gunther did. And, of course, everyone's going to have to tune in on Saturday night on the TV prelims on FS1, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time to see the fight. It'll be the first fight on, on the TV prelims. Really appreciate your time. Appreciate you taking time out here on Fight Week. I, I know it's a busy week, so I appreciate you taking some time out. Let everyone know where they can follow you out on social media and uh, shout out your sponsors, man. Yeah, no worries, man. I appreciate you uh, you know, you know, know, putting me on here as well. Um, you can reach me on uh, Instagram, Julian Rosa 3 uh, Facebook, Julian Rosa. I got my fan page, Juicy J. Um, uh, and then my sponsors, uh, since I just moved over with Jason, I don't have very many sponsors right off the bat, but, uh, uh, RDX, uh, fight gear. And then, um, uh, herbally grounded as well. They were a previous sponsor that had my older, uh, management, but, uh, yeah, I just like want to, you know, thank all my coaches, my friends and family. And obviously I want to thank Devonte for taking this fight and on short notice, cause I'm not an easy matchup for him as well. So I uh, appreciate him, you know, letting me step up for this fight to get back in the UFC.